everybody, Joy here. Let's do a tutorial. What do you say? I'm always, always messing with my clothes. Always. I just, it's like, why did I make this like this? This blouse has been in my closet for probably a couple of years now. It's a sure fit designs design that I made. I do not like round necklines. Why did I make a round neckline? <laughs> Sometimes I think, oh, that's silly, you know, how bad could you look? You need to cover up all your 72-year-old skin. But then I never wear it because I can't stand round necklines on me. My mother told me when I was a teenager, you don't look good in round necks, Joy, you have a round face. So I was just in the bathroom thinking, oh, I hate this round neckline. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what you can do if you make a garment and the garment's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It fits me perfect, as you can tell. But I don't like the neckline. So what can I do? So I just stood there in front of the mirror in the bathroom. And I unbuttoned the two top buttons. Now notice, there's two buttonholes and there's two buttons. Well, we all know buttons can come off. That's no big deal. But what do you do with two giant holes in your shirt, huh? So, now you have to pardon my mirror here in the chair that I'm about to trip over. Let's, let's do the chair. <laughs> Get a triple mirror, y'all. They're so nice. So I was in the bathroom and I went like this and I went, I wonder if I could just like fold this and wear it like that. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I could remove the buttons and the buttonholes and I could take it in inside, turn it all inside out, Take it in deeper. I've got a facing in here. See the facing? This facing? Got that facing in there. But then I thought, if I take out this bottom buttonhole, then this thing is going to be clear down here at this button, and it's going to be too low. I don't want it to be that low. So then I thought, well, okay, let's leave that button in it and see what we can do. So then I folded that like that. And I folded. Now, this other button and buttonhole has to stay in, remember. I folded that like that and this like this. And I thought, well, that's kind of cute. I could just make it curved and then go down. And curved and then go down. So I thought, well, maybe I could do that. But then I thought, well, I wonder if I could just make it straight instead of a curve and then go down. So I folded a little bit more over here and a little bit more there. And look, I can still button this button. It'll be right in the exact place. Can you tell how much better this looks on me, V, than round? Can you tell? I mean, what are you going to do when God gives you a round face? <laughs> I wish God would let you keep your skin from when you were 25 and 30. <laughs> and your jowls up here by your ears where they belong. Oh, if I wasn't so old, I would totally have a facelift, but I wouldn't go to a hospital now. Oh my goodness. I don't want to be anywhere near a hospital. So I think that's what I'm going to do. All right. So here's the plan, Stan. Leave this button and buttonhole where it is. This button and buttonhole will be cut off. This button will be removed and then that part will be cut off. And then I will end up with a v-neck blouse. Now, it's important that you have enough interfacing. You have a big enough facing inside. So you have to feel where you're going to cut it. Feel, feel the edge of your facing. The edge of my facing comes clear over here. Way over here. So I have plenty of room to just sew it, cut off the extra, and make it a permanent blouse. Want to see? I'll be back. <laughs> the first thing you have to do is take the blouse off. <laughs> so I have it opened up. I put a pin and I marked where I want to start my V. See that little green mark I made All right there? And then I matched it up to the other side. And I made a little green mark there. So I have two green marks. So now, 
I have to detach. See here my big facing? Make big facings because they are wonderful if you have to do this. See my big facing? I drew it myself, SureFit Designs. So this facing is going to end up being much smaller, but it's going to be buttoned inside. Nobody's going to know how big it is, so it's not going to be a problem. So this top button has to come off, and the top buttonhole has to come out. I have to take it out because I've got to turn this completely inside out. So I'm going to rip out this buttonhole, and I'm going to take off that button. And I probably have 20 or more seam rippers in here. And I actually found one pretty quick. Now, if you make a hole or a mess removing that buttonhole, unless you plan on maybe putting this back the way it was, and I don't, <laughs> be very, very careful taking it out. Usually from the back side, you can cut through the zigzag and you can get a buttonhole to go away. And of course the hole's still going to be there. But when, uh, I mean when I get the stitching out the hole will still be there. But I can't turn this inside out until I get rid of this. Could I just cut it off? Probably. But I want this side to be the same as the other side so I can put them together and make sure that I cut them both the same. So I just like to do it this way. Yeah. All right, so you're going to take the buttonhole out. You can do this with a store-bought blouse if there's enough facing inside it. But store-bought blouses probably didn't put a facing at all. And if they did, it's probably so skinny, you're not going to be able to do anything with it. So if you don't like the neckline on a store-bought blouse, don't buy it to start with. <laughs> and if you make your own clothes, don't make a blouse that has a neck that you don't like. It's like major duh. What did I do that for? And I love these butterflies and I love the yellow. I can't wear many yellows. I can wear this yellow duck, which I also made. I have two very, very nice embroidery <laughs> machines. Maybe I'll embroider some names on some books, huh? I might try that. The problem is getting them embroidered perfectly straight. You know, when you're ironing vinyl names on a book, why is she talking about books, George? Because I'm getting ready to make a bookshelf quilt. And it's going to have books in it. You remember the quilt I made for my friend Viv? Yes, but her books have titles on them made with um, Scan and Cut and vinyl. And the vinyl irons on and then is permanent. But you can't sew through it. You shouldn't really sew through embroidered letters either, but my buttonhole is getting very messy, as you can see. Very messy. <laughs> You'll never be able to put that blouse back the way it was, I know. It's kind of why I haven't done it. Because you know, when your blouse is several years old and you really like the material, you're not going to get any more material. Unless you bought it two or three times in your stash, which I have been known <laughs> to do. <laughs> My favorite blouse of all time. Favorite blouse was in Hancock's before it went out of business in Edmond, Oklahoma. And it was way over by the wall, way down on the bottom shelf. And it was ducks. And I'm, I'm usually not into birds. I, you, you don't see me ever wear clothes with birds or even butterflies. But something about those ducks, I just <laughs> really liked them. And that blouse came out so good. I went back to get some more of those ducks, and they were gone. Well, this whole store was probably out of business. No wonder. Oh, my gosh, whoever managed that store. Terrible, terrible, terrible management. Not at the beginning. At the beginning, it was really good. They had good managers. Okay. Buttonhole has been removed. Can you see there? Inside and outside. Two messes. But they're not going to be there anymore. Remember, I've got to turn this back right sides together. 
I have to turn it back right sides together to fix what I want to do. So the next issue is the facing has been understitched. So it can't flip out. I always understitch. See, you, you sew the seam allowance to the facing. I'm going to unstitch that. Why do they call it unpick? Don't you think that's the craziest word to use for taking out stitches? They're not unpicking the stitches, they're picking them. They're picking the stitches out, not unpicking them. <laughs> they're unsewing them, maybe, but they're not unpicking them. I just think that's the craziest expression. Unpicking. We always called it ripping. Ripping out. Seam ripper, get it? Ripping, seam ripper. Okay. Got that loose that far. Very good, very good. So I'm getting those stitches out. Now the button, the other side is the button side. So y'all know how easy it is to get a button off, right? You just take your scissors behind it and you cut it off. <laughs> All right. So again, I have the facing sewn to the seam allowance. It's called understitching, understitching. And I've got to rip that out probably all the way up to the shoulder. second button off, but the second button is going to go right back on exactly where it is now. So I'm going to cut that off. Here's the second button. Button one and button two are off. Button two is going back on. All right, see there? So now I'm going to take my green mark and I'm going to put it back here on the back. Right here is where I want to start my V. So I want to see, did I rip this out far enough back? So there's where the button's going to go back. Here's, I'm up to the shoulder. I ripped that stuff out all the way up to the shoulder. If you have steam -a seam 2 in there holding anything down, just heat it up and it'll let go. So I've got my little pink mark where I'm going to start to make a V. And I'm going to V down here and end it on top of that button, 5 8 inch on top of that button. All right? Let me re rearrange the camera. I'm telling you, my room is a mess. <laughs> oh, I just, I had this blouse on today. <laughs> I thought, I have got to fix this blouse. So I didn't get my cleanup done before my next project, which is for Mr. Burnside's, as you know, for his happy, happy birthday. It's going to be 76. The youngest he's ever going to be again. How about that? Praise the Lord forevermore. My daddy died at 72, and I am so thankful my husband is still alive. I truly, truly am. Even though we don't always get along. Do you and your husband always get along? He's such a perfectionist, you know, sometimes. I'm a perfectionist, but he's... There's got to be a different name for him. <laughs> perfectionist on steroids. <laughs> Let me put you down. So you have to have a French curve. This is a little French curve I got from Homer and Plesh. But it's the same as a big French curve. It's just not as long. So, smoothing this all out. This is where the top button used to be. No, this is where the second button is going to go again. This is the top button up here. This button's gone forever, that button. This button's staying. So, you can see up here my pink mark. And so I'm basically going to come down, 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 down. Now, how far down can I come? Your first button on your blouse should be 5 8 inch from the top. And this should be 5 8 inch wide. Let's see if it is. Yeah, it is. This should be 5 8 inch. 
So we are going to draw a 5 8 inch line right here. So my first button needs to be right there. So that means I have got to end my V right here because you've got to have 5 8 inch above your button. Does that make sense? 5 8 inch. You just can't have your button, you know, popping off. Maybe a half inch. Maybe a half inch wouldn't be bad. How much should I have here? 5 8 inch. Got to be 5 8 inch. It has to be. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to start up there at my mark and I'm going to draw my curve and you want this isn't you don't want a straight line you want a curved line and you can go like this oh that looks like a better way yeah that looks like a good way and end right there alright so now what I'll do is I'll go to my sewing machine and I'll just sew you can see up here that this is sewn do you see here? This is sewn. This is sewn, sewn, sewn. And then it comes around like this. I hope you can see this. It's upside down and backwards to me. See here where the sewing is now? Right here is where it's sewn right now. I don't like that round neckline. So I'm bringing it down to a V. The next thing is getting the other side of the blouse to be exactly the same as this side of the blouse. That's the next issue, okay? <laughs> so, we've got this marked right here. It looks real good. I think that's going to be superb. Superb, superb. So now what you can do is you can either get a needle and thread and you can sew that. I'm just going to put these pins in it and hope it works. We're going to play like we've sewn this. And then I'm going to turn it like it will be when it's sewn. And I'm going to see, see how much facing I have left? Isn't that nice? I have still, I've still got almost two inches of facing left. I always draw a wide facing for that reason. Always. All right, so this is play like we sewed that. This will all be cut off, and it'll just be short like that is, and we'll understitch it again and all of those things. All right, well, here's the front of my glass. This is the buttonhole side. And of course, those are pins, so it's not gonna be very pretty. See? So you see how much facing I have left even though I'm cutting off quite a bit. See, and so there's the new front. There is the new front, and I'm having a hard time figuring out. That's <laughs> your upside down to me. <laughs> hey, how about there? There's the new front. Here's the shoulder, here's the sleeve, and that will be the new front. Now I've got to take the buttonhole side, open it up, take out its understitching, and make sure it matches this curve so they're both exactly alike. I'll be back. How did I mark the other side? The other side has the buttonhole in it, and I can't remove the buttonhole. So it is really, really tight. It's really tight down here where the buttonhole is. And how did I make that pink curve line exactly the same as the green line, as this green line over here on the other side? How did I get it exactly the same? I put this up to here and I drew some lines, temporary lines, on this ruler. Can you see? Here's a temporary line right here and here's a temporary line right here. And that's how I knew what my curve was for the other side so they both would match. It's fiddly. You may want to make yours higher up. But if I have to sew this in on the button side, it's going to be easy. But if on the other side I have to sew this part by hand, I'll sew it by hand. But I think I can get my sewing machine there if I'm really careful and I go slow. See here, this is all, all hugged up by a buttonhole. So it's very fiddly. But I think I can get there 5 eighths inch above. And see, here's the old buttonhole on the top. And you can see it's going to be sewn away. It's going to be sewn inside and then that's going to be trimmed down to a quarter inch. So, 
I'll go sew it and we'll see how I do, huh? <laughs> I'll be back. So I've sewn my two V's. I've cut off the extra and I only have a quarter inch left. You can see my mark where I sewed it. Now this has to be pressed. And this is very, very, very tight right here. And I have to get into this point and press it. So do you all have one of these clapper boards? It's a clapper pressure board. And it has a point. It has a point there and it has a point there. So this is when you use your pointy thing. It's always like, what's that point for? I don't know. Well, you're going to find out. You put your hoosie on the watchet here. Now on the other side, I was able to get in there really close. On here I can't because remember there's a buttonhole there. Somebody wants me, yay. I get so excited now I'll go over there and just be some somebody trying to get me to send them money for their campaign and I just do delete 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 all right see there how I press that toward the facing it's going to have to be stitched again but before I stitch it again I'm going to try it on and see if this is a mess or if it looks good or what so now I'm going to get my sleeve board out here I'm going to push this point out. See here? See the buttonhole? Still there. And here's a point, and I wasn't able to get all the way in there. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to take a pin, and I'm going to pull it out. And then I'm going to press it on this board. Now, you want the facing to be in farther than the outside of the blouse. Ooh, do you love my iron? Rowenta. Perfect steam. It's in my Amazon store. Hey, go buy one. Make me some more money. I think totally in all the time I've had an Amazon store, I've made $5. <laughs> so, don't worry, I'm going to get too rich. <laughs> okay. Very good. So now let's see what we've got going on. You can see the round is gone. Here's the V on the buttonhole side. I am going to wear this blouse every day now. I haven't worn this blouse twice probably because I don't like the neckline. Look at that. Look at that. Nobody would ever know. Is that awesome? Oh my gosh, that is awesome. Now i got to put a button back. <gasps> that turned out so good. Oh my goodness, that turned out good. And so see, see how much facing I have left? You wouldn't even know I changed it. I mean, if somebody else took this blouse, they wouldn't even go, oh my goodness, this lady put in a round neck and then she changed it to a V. You wouldn't even know. So I'm gonna sew my button back on. I gotta find some light yellow thread. Sew my button back on. And before I sew this, understitch it, I'm gonna try it on. I'm gonna show it to you, make sure it looks good, and then I'll understitch it. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Still putting it on. <laughs> Ta-da! What do you think? What do you think? If you hadn't seen me do it, and you didn't know anything about me or this blouse, and you just like saw me somewhere, like at the movies or in the park or <laughs> on a spaceship or something, and I walked by you, would you think, oh my goodness, that used to be a round neck and now it's a V. I just wanted to show you that little tutorial. If you make a blouse or if you buy a blouse and you hate something about it, but you love the fabric and you love the fit and you love everything else, fix the neckline. If it's the neckline, now you know how to do it. I've done it many times. You would think my lightning fast mind, I would remember, <laughs> don't make round necks, Joy. You don't look good in them. <laughs> If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And um, next time I'm doing something I think you might be interested in, I'll be sure and turn the camera on for it. But bye for now.